everyone! Welcome to another Animation Friday, and today I thought it would be interesting to discuss something a little bit more on the negative side for uh, animation, and that revolves around characters. Now, animation is, uh, is a good way of showcasing characters uh, and creating characters, because you're literally, when you're drawing a character, you're you're creating that character just out of thin air. You know, you're not using an actor, you're not using some outside source, uh, so much as you're using your own creative thought process in order to make the character. And you give him him or her personalities, traits, and different um, and different looks to associate with the character. And uh, what ends up happening is sometimes these characters don't fortunate um, don't fortunately live up to the expectations, uh, at least in my opinion. Uh, so these are the ones that I find to be the worst um, animated characters. Now I don't mean worst in that they are that they revolve in one particular category. Um, I sort of dislike these characters for various reasons, uh, so that's why I titled this video The Worst uh, Animated Characters, and that's this is just my honest, humble opinion. Uh, you can take it for what it's worth, but uh, there's a lot of animated characters that do, I think, go in that frustration category, uh, and these are the ones I sort of grew up with, and so ones that I kind of knew, so they seemed to really bother me, or I've heard about them recently and I was very just disturbed or annoyed by how much I did not like them. Uh, so yeah, without further ado, let me address the ones that were on my list in no particular order. Um, first character is from a adult animated film out of all things. Uh, and uh, he looks and talks like Adam Sandler, because he's played by Adam Sandler. And his name is Dave Stone from Eight Crazy Nights. Now this character is unbelievably full of himself. Um, is a complete jerk. Like this is not somebody you would want to like associate with or... Uh, want to hang out with. This is a very unlikable character. And it's not to the point where it is in any way identifiable um, as to, you know, why he would... Um, I mean, they do create some sense of identifiability with inserting a plot point, but I still think that doesn't give him an excuse to be complete and other, um, uh, just to be a complete and other jerk to, to other people, like the way he is throughout this entire film. And, uh, you know, he's, he's just one of those you just don't want to root for at the end of the day. Um, even with inserting, again, that whole plot point that they insert within the film, which you will see, um, there's just a lot about his ego, his uh, laziness, his inability to really do anything with his life, just the fact that he just blames everybody else and is so uncourteous and, you know, unthankful and unappreciative. Um, just rubs me the, the in, in the way that I, I just feel is just really sending a bad message, because I think it gives people sort of that scapegoat to say, yeah, bad things happened in my life, therefore I need to be mean to other people. It's like, no, no, you don't, you don't. And to be honest, I don't feel like he changes all that much at the end. I mean, there's really not a huge emphasis on the change. Again, what you think that a film like this would focus on, since it's kind of trying to be, uh, Hanukkah version of A Christmas Carol, but it's done so poorly. It's just so poorly done, and this character is a real reason why 
um, this film really drags down and why um, ultimately uh, we don't uh, see the light really shining through at the end. And it's just all done for really cheap laughs. And um, Dave Stone is, is probably, though, the major reason why we get all of these cheap laughs and we get a ton of scenarios and a ton of things that really don't amount to much um, and are just completely stupid. Um, so yeah, I, I, I can't stand that character. Um, I, I think it's probably the most mean-spirited role that Adam Sandler has done because uh, at least even if Adam Sandler, you know, you've seen him in other films, like it doesn't go as more mean-spirited as Dave Stone. Um, I mean, and even he's drawn like Adam Sandler. Um, and it's funny, though, how they try to make him look ripped, though. <laughs> I find that hilarious. Uh, but, yeah, it's it's just unbelievably... Oh, it's just unbelievably ridiculous uh, that this character is given so much time and so much focus because he is just someone you don't want to spend time with. Um, so yeah, uh, A Crazy Nights, uh, Dave Stone, pretty much the, the nail in the coffin for that film. Now the next one I want to talk about is one that I think is more of a universal annoyance. Um, and uh, again, I think there's others that will disagree with my opinion on this, but I feel that Scrappy Doo is just annoying. I mean, this this you know, there's a way of there's a way of executing a character like that, you know, where you know he's trying to be, you know, the hero, but he's making like little slips and stumbles along the way. But no, with Scrappy Doo, you kind of have to take that kind of cute premise and you gotta like butcher it down with a hammer. Um, that's kind of what, uh, ultimately ends up being the character Scrappy-Doo, because he is so whiny in the way he talks. Let me at him! Ah, ah, look at me! I'm trying to defeat the bad guy! Woo! Ha ha ha! Isn't this so funny? No, it's not. You're just annoying. And the problem, too, is is that Scrappy oftentimes gets in the way. It's not like He's on the sidelines, you know, and he's just kind of there just to, you know, pop up and then go away again. No, it's like we have to insert Scrappy into the plot. And, you know, it's there's just been so many different scenarios with this character that um, that it just bothers me that uh, he gets sort of a center role and center attention because he is not... Um, interesting or engaging or funny he's just an annoyance he's just like yeah let me come and let me let me beat some bad guys it's like no you can't you can't do it dang you just just get out of the way and i just think it's it's on that kind of level of stupidity where scrappy dude kind of basically becomes sort of a damsel in distress you know he has to be saved he has to be taken care of because he is too stupid to see that he is a small dog and he can't defeat a big scary person dressed up as a ghost like it's oh it's just so unbelievably um stupid and the thing too is is, is that i kind of like how they made fun of that in the uh live action version uh, but again, he still maintains that same level of annoyance, that same level of um, trying to, again, be inserted into the plot. Um, you know, he's not treated as, again, the side person. And, you know, the fact that he, at least within the action, or within the live action film, he doesn't have to be saved, but constantly he needs to be taken care of um, throughout. And I understand the fact that he's a puppy and that he's supposed to sort of represent youth you know, can he at least represent a least annoying youth and one that has actually a little bit of, of brains to see, oh, I can't, I, I, I can't do this. This is beyond logic and my physical capacity. Like, like, it, can he just see that, you know, 
I mean, is it, it, that so hard for him to understand? I mean, it, it would be like me trying to hold 500 pound dumbbells. Look, look at these arms. Do you think these arms can lift 500 pound dumbbells? No, no. <laughs> and I don't even know if there's like 500 pounders that exist. I, I, I'm, I'm horrible with weights. I don't know anything about weights. But uh, again, you know, uh, I, I just, I just think that the care, just the fact that a character can't see beyond his capabilities, I think is just, is just an annoyance to me. Um, and so yeah, Scrappy Dude just really just bothers me so much. <laughs> he annoys me. Um, now moving on, uh, there are two, uh, women character, or girl characters technically in this list, and, uh, this one I remember since watching this show that I have despised, uh, ever since her face came on the screen, and that was Angelica Pickles from the Rugrats. Ooh, do I despise buys this character. She is so mean and manipulative and there's always like some scheme that she has going on the back of her head, you know, like to 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 mess things up. And yet she's supposed to sort of be kind of a protagonist because you know she's with the other kids. And that always bothered me and I always was annoyed whenever she would come up on the screen. She was just so self-centered, so self-absorbed, such, uh, so full of herself, and at the same time, uh, a manipulator in the worst sense of the word, um, that I did not identify with her at all throughout the entire show, or from uh, at least the episodes that I've seen of her, because she drives me up the walls. And I think it's one of those characters where we're supposed to hate her, we're supposed to not like what she does, we're supposed to feel that kind of rage whenever she comes up with some scheme or whatnot, but but I, I felt too that almost got to the point of annoyance because you knew that's what her plan was, you knew that she wanted to mess things up, you knew she was the drama maker, and you know, I've never understood women characters or girl characters who are like that. I think it's very, it's a very horrible message to send even to any gender, really, to be this manipulative little brat, you know? <laughs> I just, I just think it's, it sends really, really, uh, really just cringeworthy signals to people. And I, I just... I, I just couldn't stand her. She she just bothered me to no end. And I just hated that smirk that always would come up on her face. And, ooh, she was just one that I, I, I just wanted to have the animators just take a picture of her and just set, and just, you know, use her, her animated pieces as, like, firewood or something. Because I didn't want that character to exist anymore. <laughs> Oh, she just bothered me to no end. But I think that's really ultimately all I can say about her. And again, she's fiction. I'm not saying that I would actually do that to her in real life. But <laughs> but the concept is, 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 is that I think it would have been better for the show. And to be honest, I just find her annoying. Um, so, yeah, I think it would have been better off for the Rugrats had they... Uh, ha had significantly reduced El uh, Angelica Pickles' role. Second to last um, cast of characters that I want to mention, uh, and uh, again, this is really a cast of characters because they're they pretty much all fall under the same category, but they're all different, and uh, even though they're kind of really not different, and that's the Care Bears. I from the beginning, Care Bears came out. I thought that the color schemes and everything was just so unbelievably, it, it just looked like this rainbow pile of gunk, like, on the screen. Like, I, I couldn't already even stand how they were drawn uh, with those really um, mixed-in blends of these different colors. It just looked, it just looked very, you know, just, it just didn't look 
nice. It, it didn't look like that the colors flowed together. And constantly, girls had, like, these, in middle school, I remember, they would have, like, these notebooks with, like, Care Bears on the front. And I was like, eh. Even when I looked at it, I was like, eh, I don't want that on my cover at all. Um, so, that was one thing. Um, the, the animation, I thought, was just really poorly designed uh, from a color scheme. Uh and the thing is, too, is, is there's nothing unique about the Care Bears. Um, they don't give them unique personalities. They are generic as they come. Um, the, the, they are all just there to just, we care. Uh, we, we're, we scare because we care. Woo, and yay, Care Bears. Woo, you know, it's just like, it's that complete, you know, unit that, you know, displays no interesting personality traits and is just so unbelievably, yay, ha ha, smile, yeah, cameras, woo, you know, that, that very big, you know, kind of corporate pandering that I do not like, um, annoyed me so unbelievably much. I couldn't stand it. I, I couldn't stand their whole whole means of like defeating villains I thought it was just unbelievably stupid like that whole power thing that they do scare or or stare whatever they say it's so dumb to me uh so yeah I I I just so let's just <laughs> let's just say this Care Bear scared the crap out of me because they they were so like that, ha ha ha, you know, uh, Teddy Rumsford, ha ha, yeah, happy, and then they, you know, were just, just had this really horrible animation color scheme and design, and, and it was dumb how they would make some of the Care Bears not even bears, they would make them into, like, different animals, and I thought that was even more stupid, so, yeah, I just thought that there was a lack of creativity, both within the animation and with the characters, so they go on the worst list for being probably the most generic that I've seen uh, within animation. Now, last one I want to mention is uh, one that is a female, sort of similar character to Angelica Pickles. Um, but she's kind of different than Angelica. Angelica's a very manipulative, sneaky, um, uh over uh, over self-absorbed brat um who tries to get her way through manipulation and through being sort of you know quiet and you know like reading into people's vulnerabilities you know and things like that that kind of horrible person lucy from charlie brown um she's just a she's just bossy she is like the epitome of, you know, of a horrible, you know, leader. Like, she does not have any, any skills within leadership at all. Um, but yet she constantly tries to be the leader. And she constantly tries to put that enforcement in there. And, like, yells at people. And not only that, but she puts people down constantly. Um... And she does it outright bluntly, like to Charlie Brown and she's all these other characters. She's actually, I think, a little bit ruder to the boy characters than the girl characters, which I think is a horrible message to send to little girls out there. Yeah, be mean to all the little boys out there because they're they're full of cooties and, you know, and, you know, they're all jerks and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, just, again, a really stupid and bad message to send to, to kids. Um... You know that, and and you know she embodies that kind of care, uh, kind of character, and she embodies sort of that similar, um, kind of really bossy personality that I've seen in some women. Sort of similar to how I've seen the manipulation tactic that Angelica Pickles uh, presents. So yeah, those uh, those aspects of Lucy's character frustrate me. Um, I think they do bring down Charlie Brown for me, at least as far as enjoyment wise, because I just find her so unbelievably just, um, 
there for the sake of putting her there for drama and for her to make a huge scene over nothing and, you know, uh, constantly putting everybody else down and, you know, she's just, she's just not likable, uh, to me. She has nothing in her that, that says, yeah, I really want to hang out with this person. There's nothing at all. Uh, and another thing too is, is, is she's just so unbelievably loud and, Again, she kind of displays sort of that similar maybe manipulation. I guess I'll take that back. Uh, I guess that is similar to her, between her and Angelica's character because she does the football thing. But again, Angelica doesn't really do those kinds of things. Like she doesn't do, she doesn't physically try to um, insert problems or try to get people to do what she wants. She just kind of manipulates manipulates and schemes and and is, is not as loud and as a at the forefront as Lucy is where she like tries to take charge and oh yeah I'm I'm a strong independent woman mm -hmm. and it's like no you're not you're annoying you don't serve anything all you do is complain and you treat Charlie Brown and all these other kids horribly and you are the reason why you may why the show makes me cringe at some points because you were in it <laughs> and again I still love the show Charlie Brown um but again if I were to pick out of all the characters that I've seen that has showed the worst amount of uh of personality Lucy would be number one um and uh she's one of the ones that I think has stood out over the years and she just drives me up the walls. I can't stand her. I can't stand her way, the way that she acts. And I don't like that whole go girl attitude that puts me on a pedestal and, you know, puts everybody else down. And, you know, and, and I don't like how she's a very sort of, you know, kind of like the, the power hungry. Like she likes to try to get a rise sort of out of people, you know, just to have things her way. And it's ridiculous. Um, and it's clear with throughout the show, she really doesn't learn all too much, um, at least from what I've seen. So, yeah, I can't stand her. Um, but those are all the characters that I have for this list. Uh, these ones are the worst, in my opinion, for various reasons that I've already mentioned. Um, but, yeah, I think that's really all I can say about them. I'm sure everybody's got their own list of the ones that are animated that they find to be the most um uh annoying obnoxious or just all right down evil or you know um or just just or just annoy you to no no end um but uh these were the ones for me personally uh but yeah i think that's really all i can say about them but if there are any questions comments concerns i'd be more than happy to answer them Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a pleasant day, week, month, and year, and I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.